Good morning. Good morning. We thank God for this opportunity once more. Amen. For he has given us an invitation yeah, yeah. to worship him. Yes. So we pray that you would join in with us as we worship our mighty and awesome God yes. for all that he's done and for who he is. Yes. Our singers are going to come with a song now, and Brother Edward is going to lead us in devotion. And our singers will come back, and then I'll come back and give you a word from the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Let's praise God together this morning. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Give him a hand clap of praise. If you know that you are grateful and thankful to God, you ought to give him some praise. God woke you up this morning, give him some praise. Because we are grateful. Come on, put your hands together. Thank you, God. Because we can't live without you. We can't breathe without you. We can't move. Lord, I'm grateful. Oh, Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, you've done. Lord, you've done so much for me. Oh, so thankful. Oh, so thankful. I can't live. I can't live without your love. Lord, you are my life. Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, you've done so much. Lord, you've done so much for me. Oh, so thankful. Oh, so thankful. I can't live. I can't live without your love. Lord, you are my life. Lord, Let's say that again. Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, you've done Lord, so much. about your goodness, God. I can't live without it. I can't live without your love. I can't breathe. I can't breathe without your love. I can't breathe. Lord, I can't breathe. I can't breathe without your love. I can't breathe without your love. I can't breathe. I need you, Jesus. I can't breathe without your love. I can't breathe without your love. I can't move. Lord. We can't live without you. We 
We can't breathe without you. I can't move. Give God some praise. Yeah. By reading this morning from the book of Psalms, Psalms 1. It said, Bless the Lord. I'm sorry. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the discomfort, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law do he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. His leaves also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so but the, like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. Psalms 1. Let me pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Lord, let your will be down on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, God, our daily bread. Give us our debt as we forgive our debtors. Oh God, we come to you at this time in the name of Jesus Christ. Come in God to say thank you for your goodness, for your kindness, for your tender love and care. Thank you God for last night rest. Protected us while we slept in our bed, my father. But early this morning, God, you touch us one more time. And our eye open will behold another day, oh God. A day whom we have never seen before, O oh God, a day shall never return again. Thank you, Matt, for giving us a mind to come to the house of worship. Oh, here we are this morning, O oh God. Come and call upon your name, O oh God. We're standing in this particular time, at this particular time, God, in the Good Shepherd Missionary Baptist Church. God, you know all about us this morning. You know our heart, Lord, you know our mind. You know our thought, oh God. We come in, oh God, to say thank you for everything, for your goodness, for you've been so good to us, oh God. So kind to us, oh God. So God, we at this time, bless us in a special way, oh God. Bless this service today, oh God. Let it be what you would have it to be, I pray. I know you're able, oh God. All power is in your hand. You made us all. God, you know all about us, Lord. You know just what we need, I pray. Bless our pastor in a special way. God, you made him. You know all about him. Bless our sister and pastor the very same, oh God. Bless all our ministers over here, God. Let them continue to preach your word, oh God. Let them preach an uncompromising gospel. Let the world know there's a reality in serving a true and a living God, oh pray. Oh, have mercy, Lord Jesus. Bless everyone that remember, oh God. You know us name by name. You know what we need, oh God. Bless those that are here this morning. Bless those that are at home, oh God. Listen to the service, oh God. Let them be focused on you, I pray. Because it's all about you, God. It's not about us, I pray. You've been so good to us, oh God. Bless every church that's open in your name, oh God. Let them continue to do your will, oh God. Bless your saints everywhere, all over the land and country. Let us stand for you and you alone, oh God. Because it's all about you, God. It's not about man. Bless everybody, oh God. Bless our whole world, oh God. You know what's going on today. You know what's happening in our world, oh God. But Lord, you're still in control of everything. Bless our president, oh God. Hold him in the heart of your hand. Oh, have mercy, Lord Jesus. Bless the Democrat. Bless the Republican. Oh, have mercy, God. It's not about that, God, but it's all because of you, God. Oh, have mercy, God. It's because you gave your only begotten son to come and die for us, oh God. We may have a right to the free of life. Oh, have mercy, God. Oh, God, how we love you. How we praise you, God. How we magnify your most wonderful name. Oh, God, every one time we need to call upon you, God. We need you right now, oh God. We need you everywhere, God. Oh, have mercy, Lord Jesus. Bless the sick and afflicted, oh God. You're able, oh God, to do all things. Let the one go preach your word this morning. Give him preaching power, I pray. 
Oh, have mercy, God. Let the one go teach Sunday school lesson this morning. Give them teaching power. Oh, have mercy, God. Let us have a listening ear, oh God. But we can praise your most wonderful name. Oh, bless the singers, oh God. Let us sing to the glory to your honor, I pray. Oh, have mercy, God. That someone may come crying. What must I do to be saved? Oh, have mercy, God. We love you so much, God. We praise you. Ask it all in Jesus' name we pray. And for his sake. Amen. 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 Let's gather the children. Gather the children. Bring them to the screen or your laptop, whatever you have. And we're going to sing every move I make. Come on, let's give God some praise. Give God some praise. <laughs> Come on, put your hands together. <laughs>
way lay. Come see where he lay. He rose this morning and he lived today. Come see where he lay. Come see where he lay. He conquered death and he wrapped the grip. Come on and see. Come see where he lay. He rose this morning, and he lived today. Come see where he lay. Come see where he lay. He conquered them, and he wrapped the grave, and led him to the cross. They pissed him in the side. They crowned him in thorns. He bled and died. Living in love. 
chapter 3, verse 7 through 17. Joshua 3, 7 through 17. Thank God for our singers this morning, for allowing God to use you in the way that he did. Joshua chapter 3, verses 7 through 17. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When you are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, you shall stand still in Jordan. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Hivites and the Perizzites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passeth over before you into Jordan. Now therefore take you twelve men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe a man. And it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth 
shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above. And they shall stand upon in heap. And it came to pass when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan, and the priest bearing the ark of the covenant before the people. And as they that bear the ark were coming to Jordan, and the feet of the priest that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the waters, for the Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest, that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon an heap very far from the city Adam, that is beside Zeradan. And those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, failed and were cut off. And the people passed over right against Jericho. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan. And all Israel passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. First subject this morning, our transitions lead to God's promises. Our transitions leads to God's promises. The nation of Israel is in a transitional period right now. They have left slavery in Egypt. They've made their 40-year journey through the wilderness. Now they have uh, conquered Ark and Sion, and now they're getting ready to cross Jericho into the promised land that God has promised them. Now, they're on the banks of the Jordan River waiting on command from the Lord. The Lord tells Joshua in, in the first part of this, this chapter, he says, I'm going to be the one that leads you, but you're going to have to do what I say as I am leading you. So now when you get to verse 7, it says that the Lord says to Joshua, this day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I remember some, uh, I guess, ooh, 30 years ago, 31, yeah, about 31, 32 years ago, I used to work for a bottle making company, a plastic bottle making company. And we made all bottles. And uh, bottles all look the same, but the different brands had different labels. So anytime we were going to kind of switch labels, we would holler out, changeover to those that were in the plant that would know that a transition is about to happen so if you heard changeover you knew that a transition was about to happen so in, in, in our text this morning God is telling Joshua changeover he says a switch is about to come he says uh, in verse 7 and the Lord said unto Joshua this day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Listen, our transmissions or our transitions are commissions by God that lead to promises. Our transmission transitions are commissions or calls by God that lead to his promises. Listen what he tells Joshua. Joshua, this commission is direct in respect to time and person. He says, Joshua, today. Now that word today means a period between sunrise and sunset. So he's telling Joshua, look, it's not going to happen over a period of time. But today... I'm going to magnify you. I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to exalt you in the eyes of the nation of Israel. He said, it's going to happen today. And, and it's going to happen to you. He, said, he, said, he says to Joshua, he says, he says and, and the Lord said to, to, to who? To Joshua. Listen, his commission is direct in respect to person and time. He says first to you, Joshua. He said, I, I, I'm not talking about Caleb. 
But I'm talking about you, Joshua. He said, I, I ain't talking about any of the other Israelites, but it's for you, Joshua. He said, and, and listen, listen, not only is it, is, is it just for you, but it's going to happen today. And he says, uh, not only is the, the commission dis- direct in respect to time and person, but the commission is distinct in the change in perception of who is who he is. Listen, he says to Joshua in the second part of that verse, that today, this day, will I magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. He says to Joshua, he says, I'm going to begin to now raise you up in a manner that they're going to know, the children of the nation of Israel will know that just as I was with Moses, I will be with you. He said, ain't going to be no doubt in their mind. The things that I'm about to do in and through you, Joshua, is going to prove that I am with you. Now you got to understand something. Joshua was, was being measured up something that was really great. Because it was Moses that showed up in Egypt and told Pharaoh, let my people go. And, and, and at God's word, guess what? Pharaoh let his people go. And it was Moses when they stood at the Red Sea that held out his arms and the sea opened up and they crossed on dry land. Joshua had some big shoes to fill now. But, but, but God says, when I get through with you, they going to look at you just like they looked at Moses. There's going to be a change in you, Joshua. No, more, no longer are you going to be second in command. But now you're going to be giving the orders. Not only are our transmissions or Joshua's commissions are direct and distinct, but they're pedagogical. That word pedagogical just means instructional. That, that, that your commission, your call, Joshua, is instructional. Look at verse 8 and verse 9. And thou shalt command the priest that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When you are coming to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall stand still in Jordan. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither and hear the words of the Lord your God. Joshua's commission is pedagogical, instructional to him, and to be transferred by him. Listen, uh, the, the ESV version of, uh, of, of this scripture says, as for you, in verse 8, God says, as for you, Joshua, I'm commanding you to command them. Joshua has to understand that he's going to get his instructions from God. But not only are his instructions for him, but his instructions are intended that he pass them on to others. Listen, we're going through this pandemic now, and God has, is bringing us to a transition. Whether, whether you believe it or not, we're, some things are changing. We're not going back to the way it used to be. I don't know what it's going to look like in the future, but he's changing things. And we have to come to grips as believers in God that God is making a change. But some things in the change ain't going to change. There are some things in the change that are not going to change. He's still calling you and I. And he's still direct in respect to time and person. He's telling us right now in this pandemic, I'm calling you to do what I've called for you to do. Oh, it, was, it was amazing. Yesterday I went to the grocery store and, and, and there was a church on the corner and they were holding up signs. They, they, they could not make personal contact with people because of the social distancing, but it did not stop them from spreading God's word. They were holding up signs with scriptures on the signs. Listen, Times have changed, but the mission ain't changed. Yes, and he's calling for us 
to get his word out. Listen, 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 listen. In, in, in verse 8 and 9, he says, you, I'm giving you the, the instructions, but I want you to give the instructions to the nation. How, how is that relevant to me, Reverend? Listen, God is instructing your life every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. when you turn on YouTube or when you turn on Facebook or if you call in on the conference call. God is giving you instructions for your life for you to make this transition to where God wants you to be. The goal is now you take that information that you're getting, those instructions that you're getting, and pass it on to those. Listen, Joshua didn't go into Jericho saying this is what God said. He went in the nation of Israel. You got to understand who this was. This was his family, his cousins, his uncles, his aunts, his in-laws, his neighbors, his best friend he grew up with, his BFF from Facebook or Instagram or, or whatever gram. Joshua had the responsibility to take the instructions God gave him and to pass them on to those that were closest to him. It's, it's time now, listen. Because you know what, God, God done stopped us from meeting a whole lot of people, y'all. I, I keep saying this. He's, he, he's, he's, he's tightened up our circle of people we have influence on and he's expecting us to carry out his mission in that small circle of influence in which we have. Because you know what God is really saying? We got too many cousins not saved. We got too many friends that don't know about Jesus. For us to be children of God, we ought to be sharing the instructions that God has given us with them. Now you got to understand something. When, when he, he, he's instructing, look, the instructions that Joshua is getting, they are for the nation of Israel. You can't be taking everything that God say to your unbelieving family. But you can take the message of Jesus Christ dying, being buried, and rising again. How, how do I know that? Look what Paul tells to the Philippians. He says in Philippians 2, 9 through 11, he says, therefore, God has God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and of those in heaven and of those on the earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Listen, he makes Joshua a promise that he would exalt him. You, you and I are not going to be exalted but what he expects from us is to exalt the Savior. It's our responsibility to lift Jesus up. Because he says if Jesus is lifted up, he's going to draw. And it's going to be to the glory of God the Father. Our transitions are commissions by God that leads to his promises. Our transitions are commands from God that leads to his promises. Our transitions are commands from God that leads to his promises. Look at verse 10. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will, he will with our fail, without fail, I'm sorry. Let me back up, slow down. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Hivites and the Perizzites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Jebusites. Behold the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth pass it over before you into Jordan. Now therefore take you twelve men out of the tribes of Israel out of every tribe of man and it shall come to pass as Soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off 
from, from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. Listen, our transitions are commands from God that leads to his promises. Joshua expresses his commands based on God's covenantal promises. Look, look what Joshua said. Hereby, verse 10, you shall know that the living God is among you and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Hivites and the Perizzites and the Gergesites and the Amorites and the Jebusites. Listen to what Joshua said. Joshua said, God has made a promise to our father Abraham that he would give him this land. But now there are some people that are dwelling in this land. He also made a promise to Moses that if we obey him, if we keep his command, he's going to drive them out of the land, take possession of the land, and give it to us. So he says, today you're going to know that the living God is among us. The one who's made covenant promises is about to keep another one of his promises. Listen, things change, but God's covenant don't change. If God makes a promise, you can count on it. He told Abraham, he says, look at the stars. Your descendants going to be like the stars in the sky. Sand on the beach. Right now, it's about two million of them. God keeps his word. He, 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 tells, he tells Moses, he says, if you obey me, I bless you. But if you disobey me, I curse you. When, when, when they get to the promised land within two years, and, and Moses send the 12 spies, and the 12 spies fail to trust God and gives a bad report. I mean, the 10 spies fail to trust God and gives a bad report. Guess what? For 39 years, for 38 years, they wandered in the wilderness. God keeps his promises. But now he brings them right back to what he promised them. Had he not brought them back, had he not brought them to the Jordan River, God would have lied. But God says, I promise to give you. You can take possession. You will possess this land. So God keeps his word. And, and Joshua is letting them know, we, 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 are, 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 we have commands coming from a God that keeps his word. Now, you don't mind doing something for a boss that every time you tell him, he tells you to do something, you know he ain't going to do something else other than what he told you. You understand what I'm saying? You don't mind working for a guy that you know he's honest. You know he's going to always tell the truth. You, you can count on him. You can depend on him. When you got a trouble, you can go to him, tell him he'll help you solve your problem. You, you don't mind working for someone. That's what Joshua is trying to let the nation know. God keeps his promises. And his promises are part of his command. Joshua expresses his commands based on God's covenant of prophecy, provisions. Verse 11 and 13 says, Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passeth over before you in Jordan. Now, therefore, take 12 men out of the tribe of Israel, out of every tribe of man. Listen, he says, Joshua expresses his commands based on God's covenant of provisions. The ark of the covenant of the Lord is a representation of God's presence. Listen, anytime they saw the ark of the covenant, they knew God was among them. So listen what Joshua tells him. He says, now to the priest, he says, you, now therefore take, uh, behold the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth, pass it over before you. Listen what Joshua tells the nation of Israel. He says, look, there goes God. If God is moving, it's time for us to move. Because the Ark of the Covenant represented God's presence among his people. Not, not only that, he said, he tell, Joshua tells them, he said, pick 12 men out of, out, of, out of every tribe. Now those 12 men represent a relationship that the nation of Israel has with God. So he says, take 12 men. Then he said, not only take 12 men, but he says, uh, the Ark of the Covenant is a rep representation of God's power anywhere the Ark of the Covenant was and rested, all of God showed up. 
So here is the ark of God going into the Jordan River. And it's going to not only bring God's presence, but anytime you get his presence, you got all his power. Now that ark of the covenant is a pre-representation of Jesus Christ. When it was overlaid with gold, it was showing the purity of who Jesus was. So now, anytime that ark went anywhere, God was there, right? You remember Jesus asked Peter a question. Peter, he asked his disciples a question. He said, who do men say that I am? And, and, and some say, some say you yeah, some say you're Elijah. Some say you. And, and Jesus turned and he said, "Well, who do you say I am?" And Simon Peter answered and said to him, "You are the Christ, the Son of the Living God." Jesus answered and said to him, "Blessed are you, Simon Bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you." But my father who is in heaven, listen, we got the presence of Jesus with us. So whatever we're going through, while we're going through this transition, we have the presence of God with us. Listen, you may be affected by COVID-19, but don't forget that the presence of God is with you. And anytime his presence is there, you got all his power. You, you may be suffering through unemployment right now, but don't forget you got the presence of God. And anytime the presence of God is there, you got all his power. You may be fighting for social justice. Let's not forget we have the presence of God with us. <laughs> See, ain't nobody ever tied that together. And any time he comes, guess what? You got all his power. Now, the children of Israel, they are They're getting ready to cross over the Jordan River now. They got everything they need, seem like. We've got the call. We've got the command. But, but, but God wants them to know this is just the commencement. Now that word commencement means just the beginning. It's just the beginning. Listen, they ain't done nothing yet. Because crossing over the Jordan ain't the promise. But the promise is Jericho, Ai, the northern cities, and the southern cities. So in order for them to get to the, to the promise that God has really promised them, they got to understand crossing the Jordan is just the beginning. It's just the beginning. I hear you talking about, I'll be glad when 2020 is over. But I stopped by to tell you this morning, 2020 is just the beginning. Huh? It's just the beginning. We're hoping for a vaccine by November 3rd. But I stopped by to tell you, even if we get a vaccine, it's just the beginning. Some of y'all are waiting on a stimulus. If that stimulus comes, guess what? It's just the beginning. Some of y'all going to see some bigger paychecks next week. Well, I'll start by to tell y'all. It's just the beginning of some small ones next year. God wants the children, the nation of Israel to understand. Crossing the Jordan is just the beginning. Because once you cross the Jordan, that's when the work really begins. Once you cross the Jordan, that's when the fighting starts. Once you cross the Jordan, that's when you really going to run up against opposition. It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. Verse 14 says, 
And it came to pass when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan. And the priests were bearing the ark of the covenant before the people. And as they bear the ark, were coming unto Jordan. And the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water. For Jordan overflowed all his banks all the time of harvest. The waters which came down from above stood and rose up on a heap. Very far from the city Adam, that is beside Zeredon, and those that came down toward the sea of the plain. Even the salt sea failed and were cut off. And the people passed over against Jericho. God blocks the Jordan from Adam to Zarethan, which is approximately five miles from the Dead Sea. Now that word Jordan means descending down. Now when God went up uh, and he blocked the waters, he blocked them from Adam and all the waters that were descending down. I stopped by to tell you this morning that, that Jesus came and he was born in a manger. And when he came, he rolled back some stuff that was in our way. We were trying to get to where God wanted us to be. But thank God for Jesus. He blocked some things that were coming down from us, from our father Adam. What are you talking about, brother preacher? Romans 14, 5, 14 and 9 says, Nevertheless reign from Adam to Moses, uh, even those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. But the free gift is not like the offense, for if by one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace to one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. For if by the man, one man's offense that reign through the one much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ therefore as through one man's of his judgment came to all men resulting in condemnation even so through one man's righteousness the act of free give came to all men resulting in justification of life for as by one man's disobedience, many were made to sin. So also by one man's obedience, men were made righteous. I stopped by to tell you this morning, there were some sins that were rolling down from our father Adam, but Jesus stepped in and locked the sins of our life. Some of us were lying, but Jesus stepped in. Some of us were backbiters, but Jesus stepped in. Some of us were homemongers, but Jesus stepped in. Some of us were homosexual, but Jesus stepped in. Some of us were murderers, but Jesus stepped in. And he blocked. Oh, yeah. Not only does he block what, what's running down, but he makes our way easy also. Look, 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 look at verse, verse 16. He says that the waters would, look, 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 look verse 17. He says, and the priest that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan. And all Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. What he said? He said, the priest stood on Dry ground. Y'all missed it. The priest stood on. The Jordan River was flooded. But when the priests put their feet in the water, and when they went to make their way to the center, 
It says their feet were stable because God dried up the river. I stopped by to tell you this morning that there are some things we're going through. Through COVID-19, it may seem hard, but if you look real close, God has dried up the river. There are some things that we may be going through we ain't never seen before. But if you pay attention, God has dried up the river.
The only way we're going to get to the promises, y'all, is we got to adjust to the transitions. We can't get to where God really want us to be. And we can't attain what God really want us to have. Listen, listen to what Paul says. Paul says, I have not yet attained. But I, I, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling. Listen, we may suffer now, but guess what? Resurrection. They just sung a song say, he got up. That's the promise that God has given us. Resurrection is coming. I heard somebody say, just wait three days. It, it may be Friday in your life right now. But guess what? Sunday morning is coming. There may be one this morning. Who've heard the word of God? Come to realize I need a savior. I need someone to rescue me. Paul says, For I deliver unto you that which I also received. The Lord Jesus Christ died, he was buried, and he rose again according to the scripture. He said, this is what will save you if you put your trust and belief in Jesus Christ. Is there one this morning? Is there one this morning? Listen, if, if you're sitting at home and watching us on Facebook and you desire uh, to have a relationship with Jesus Christ first, you can give us a call at 713-672-9847 and we'll walk you through what it takes to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And there may be someone out there watching us that are looking for a church home. You can give us a call at 672-713-672-9847. We'll be happy to have you as a part of the Good Shepherd Church. Whether you be an in-person or a virtual member, we'll be happy to have you. Is that one this morning? Now, one of the things that Jesus Christ did when he went to Calvary, before he went to Calvary, he, he sat in the upper room with his disciples. And he began to break bread with them. And he began to share with them that this is my body which is broken for you. This cup is the blood of the New Testament that is shed for you. He says, for well, as often as you do it, eat it in remembrance of me. And we're about to share in the Lord's table now. Those of you at home, we ask that you would get your elements together now. And those of you that are in the sanctuary, we ask that you would come now.
us pray. Dear God, our Father, we come before you once more, confessing that we've sinned against you. And we've done some things you told us not to do. We've said some things you told us not to say. We've gone some places physically and in our mind that we shouldn't have gone. So we come confessing it to you now, Master, praying that you would forgive us. Because you promised this in your word. If we would confess our sins, you were faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness and cleanse us, Master. So we come confessing you before you this morning, Master. Now, Master, there may be someone that has ought against their brother, have something against their brothers. We pray now that we would, they would refrain from taking this meal, whoever they are, wherever they are. Because your word teaches us that, it, that if we take it in an unworthy manner, it can bring sickness, weakness, even sleep, Master. We can even die. So we pray now that they would refrain at this time. And Master, we thank you for the invitation to remember you. Because you also gave us a promise that one day we will eat it anew in your kingdom. So Master, as we're going through this transition, we're waiting to get to the promise of eating it at your table. In your kingdom. Master, we pray for all that we will continue to be what you've called for us to be. Trusting you in all things. Amen. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, broke it, and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take all of it, and they all ate. Likewise, also, he took the cup, blessed it, and said, this is the cup of the new co covenant of my blood, which is shed for you. But where there is no shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Take and drink all of it, and they all drank. He says, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death until he comes again. That's another promise that we will drink it again with him in his kingdom. But we got to go through the transition to get there. All right. It's offering time. Those of you that are faithful givers online, we pray that you continue to do what God has led you to do. Those of you that are going to drop yours off or you need your deacon to come get yours, you can do what you need to do. Amen. We thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Amen. Amen. All right. We have one announcement. Oh, two, two announcements. Uh, we know next Sunday is what? Show Pastor Love. So we're asking that you would do something a little special for our pastor and first lady next Sunday. You can cash app them. You can even put it on the love line on your online giving. Or you can just bring it by the church, whatever, however you desire to do. But we pray that you would participate with us next Sunday in celebrating our pastor in which God has given us. Amen. Amen. Also, we know, we know, we know that uh, the third Sunday of this month, we normally, we've been doing it for 60, it would have been 61 years this year. Uh, yeah, 61 years, because they made 60 years last month. So we've been doing it since the inception of this church. We've been going, going to that church, the third Sunday, and said, that's the Christian faith church. Because of what we're experiencing, we're not going this year. We're not going this year. It's only because of what we're experiencing. We know what the rule says. That we don't need to gather more than. And you know if we go, it's going to be more than. So let me, that's why we're not going this year. Uh, let's not forget this week, our reading assignment starts, uh, started last week, actually. Galatians started September 3rd, and then we're reading Daniel next. Uh, I know y'all enjoyed that little vacation. 
I don't know why, because y'all was already on vacation. But I know we, we didn't have had Bible study the last two weeks, but it will resume this Wednesday morning. Amen. 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 Bible study will resume, resume this Wednesday morning. Uh, let us now. I think that's, oh, birthdays and anniversaries, huh? All right, let me find. All right. Power clap for our birthdays. Ryan Clay Jr. Jessalyn Dennis. Kellen Harris Jr. Doris Addison. Monique Ellisor. Ashton LaFleur. Alicia Stamps. Lloyd Wade Jr. Geraldine Bertrand. Melanie Jones. And Michael McCoy. Amen. Amen. And we have one anniversary this week, and they just happened to be with us this morning. Ernest and Tyrone, uh, Ernest and Andrea Stamps. Amen, amen, amen. We pray that we've said something this day that will help you be more of what God wants you to be. We're going through a transition, true enough. But the good news is, is that we always have the presence of God. And he's preparing our way for us that we can get to the ultimate promise of eternal life in glory. We just got to trust him as we're going. Let us stand. We're going to pray. And as we're praying this morning on our way out, we pray that you would remember Brother Callahan in your private prayers, who has had the death of his brother. That his funeral services were yesterday. Pray that God will continue to strengthen Brother Callahan. Pray that you would pray for Brother Milton Harvey, who's had a leg amputation surgery this week. He is recovering. Let's pray for God's recovery in his life. And let's also pray for Brother Clyde Berry, where it has been documented that Brother Berry has cancer. And he is in the hospital at this time. So continue to remember these three people in your prayer. Brother Callahan, Milton Harvey, Clyde Berry. Now, as you're going this week, don't forget your mask. Wash your hands. And use sanitizer. And if you can stay home, stay home. Dear God, our Father, we come once more. Thanking you for who you are. And your mighty acts in our life. We praise you for giving us an opportunity to praise you. We understand that we didn't know what to do. But through the help of your Holy Spirit, you guided us through this worship this morning. And we pray that you would pleased with our worship. Master, we've given you our all. There's nothing left because you deserve our all. Now, Master, we pray for Brother Callahan that you so gracefully put in our presence. We pray that you would continue to comfort his heart and his mind as he's dealing with the loss of his brother. We pray your strength in his whole family, Master. At the same time, give Brother Dave us the strength to stand and speak your word because we understand it's in your word. It's where we find comfort. Then, Master, we pray for Brother Milton RV. You, 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 you know what's going on in his life. You've caused the amputation of his leg. But we understand that you're going to get glory in Milton's life. So, Master, we pray that he would find comfort in knowing that you're using him to bring yourself glory, Master. Then, Master, we pray for Brother Clyde Berry. You know where the cancer's at. You know what the cancer's doing. We understand that you can take the cancer away. But in the meantime, Lord, as Clyde is going through this transition, help him to understand that you're bringing him to your promises. Now, Master, we pray for the Good Shepherd Church as a whole. You know us all name by name. You know the ones that are infected with COVID-19. And you know those of us that are affected by COVID-19. 
But master, we're going to trust you. Knowing that you're bringing us to your promises. You're not going to give us land down here. It's not about the cars down here. It's not about the houses. But we understand you're going to give us love. You're going to give us joy. You're going to give us peace. You're going to give us long suffering. You're going to give us meekness. You're going to give us kindness. Those are the things you promised for us down here. But the good news is that's not all we're going to get one day. We're going to rule and reign with you in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen and thank God. Sunday school will start at 1030.